So now we'll discuss three-dimensional graphics for visualization. And in order to do three-dimensional graphics, we have to simulate how light gets from a light source off of an object into our eye so that we can perceive it the same way that uh, we would perceive a, a real-world scene. So what will we learn? We'll learn about the real world ways that light leaves a light source and uh, reaches our eye. We'll learn the physics of why is the sky blue? Why is the sun yellow? Why is grass green? And in general, how does three-dimensional graphics simulate these physical processes? And so here's a typical scene of, uh, of the real world and how we would perceive that. Uh, we have a, a light source, a, an object reflecting light, and then a sensor, which is our eye and light leaves, in this case, the sun, and it's, uh, this light is powerful across the spectrum, and so uh, it's essentially white. But then that light goes to the sky, and the sky scatters the light differently based on um, which uh, region of the spectrum it's dealing with. So light at uh, the red wavelengths will get scattered less, and light at the blue wavelengths will get scattered more. So that light gets scattered to other locations in the sky, which makes the sky blue, and which makes the sun appear yellow because that light's making it all the way through. That yellow sunlight hits a tree uh, or grass or any other um, biome and uh, certain um, certain wavelengths of that light are getting absorbed uh, by chlorophyll molecules and turned into photosynthate which feeds the tree and um, and so the uh, chlorophyll is absorbing light mostly in the blue regions in the blue wavelengths and in the red wavelengths and reflecting light not absorbing the light in the green wavelengths so the light uh, reflected off of a tree is mostly green and so then it reaches, hits us in the eye, reaches our, our sensor in, in our eye so that we can perceive it. And there it gets sensed uh, by uh, essentially cones. The colors, the wavelengths of light stimulate three different kinds of cones. Um, a mostly red cone, a mostly green cone, and a mostly blue cone. And these send three different responses to our perceptual system. And so you may have a complex uh, wavelength of light indicating its color, but at some point when the eye perceives that, that gets turned into three numbers instead of a bunch of numbers. Um, and so we get this tristimulus uh, theory of light perception, and that's why we um, display things using red, green, blue colors in, in pixels on graphics displays to directly stimulate the red cones, the green cones, and the blue cones. So we can simulate this process, um, and we can look, for example, as at a camera. And a, a modern camera, in this case a pinhole camera that has a very small aperture, is getting light reflected off of an object, in this case, in this, case this blue bunny rabbit, that goes through a, a focal point and then gets projected onto an image plane that would be sensed in, in modern cameras by a CCD array. We can take that image plane and we can just bring that in front of the camera and we get the exact same image. It's not inverted, it's just placed in front. And you can think of this as being a window and you're looking through a window out into the world and seeing a blue bunny. You could imagine where that blue bunny would be on the window that you see there. And that's the exact same image inverted that you would get on the film plane because of the uh, geometry of this camera system. Well, we can remove the camera system and we can put an eye right at that focal point. And this gives us this image plane. And so basically when we're looking out into a three-dimensional scene, what we're seeing is the same thing that would be projected onto a two-dimensional window to the world through those same projectors um, just a certain fix, fixed distance away. And that's the way we can simulate with a two-dimensional image what the eye would see in a three-dimensional world. And in computer graphics, um, as we discussed before with two-dimensional graphics, we're going to simulate shapes using primitives, in this case vector primitives, except these are now three-dimensional vector primitives. And so um, we have triangles, and the triangles are specified by three vertices, and those three vertices have edges between them and a region we'll call a polygonal face. And you can create a mesh of these triangles to define a three-dimensional object, in this case, a bunny rabbit. And those triangles are then projected by a three-dimensional, what's called a three-dimensional graphics pipeline, onto a two-dimensional image plane. And then the 
Polygons on that two-dimensional image plane are then discretized in the pixels. This is a rasterization process, and in fact, the same rasterization process we were discussing in two-dimensional graphics, where, where regions and edges are discretized into pixels instead of straight lines and, and uh, continuous regions. And so the way 3D graphics works is for each one of these triangles, each one of these primitives, we're going to figure out its illumination by simulating the light coming from a light source reflecting off of it. And then we're going to project that triangle and its illumination onto this image plane. And then we're going to rasterize that triangle by filling its region in with pixels. And that's what gets displayed on the pixel display. And so we can speak of these processes as vertex processing. This is also called transform and lighting, where we're taking vertices of triangles and projecting them onto an image plane. Rasterization, taking those two-dimensional triangles and converting them into pixels. And then pixel processing, which takes those pixel regions and figures out what color should be on their interior. Uh, we also will need to view three-dimensional scenes, we need to figure out where is the eye in, in the scene. And so we'll set up things like world coordinate systems. And this eye and this teapot e example will, will be located at positions in three-dimensional coordinates in the same way that primitives were located in two-dimensional coordinates in the previous example. So we use this world coordinate system and its origin is off someplace and we can describe everything relative to this coordinate system. And we will specify a view. Basically, where are we and what are we looking at? Our eye point will be located at a certain set of coordinates and world coordinates. And we'll be looking at a point, also specified as a um, set of coordinates and world coordinates, three coordinates, x, y, z. And then that view is going to be transformed into a new coordinate system that looks very similar to our canvas coordinate system so that we have an x-axis and a y-axis. And in this case, we're extending from minus 1, minus 1 to 1, 1. And, and these coordinates are the coordinates of the window we were looking through that forms the image plane. And another thing we want to do is to create a sense of perspective so that things farther away appear smaller and things closer to us um, appear larger. In computer graphics, we do that um, by processing the, um, the primitives themselves. We actually make the things that are farther away smaller and the things that are closer to us larger. So this may look correct for a perspective scene of a teapot on a table. But if I look at it from the side view, what I've actually done is made the front of the table larger and the back of the table smaller so that when it gets projected onto my 2D image plane, uh, I get correct proportions for a perspective rendering. Um, and from this point, um, we've processed the, our primitives and we would then rasterize them and fill them in in the same fashions that we did for our two-dimensional graphics examples.